It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Ah. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, to the Premier. Over the last few days, many Ontarians have written to New Democrat MPPs to share stories of the role that education workers play supporting kids in our schools. The common thread of all, in all of them is that, despite the best efforts of this government to starve our education system of resources, the quality of kids' education is being protected because of the hard work of education workers and their teachers. At the end of the day, it's our kids who are going to pay the price if this Premier and his minister don't get back to the bargaining table. Will the government commit to scrapping Bill 28 and bargaining in good faith today? And to reply, the Premier. Mr. Speaker, that's exactly why we want to keep them in class. We'll do whatever it takes to keep students in class where they belong. We want parents to know that we're doing everything we can to make sure the child, their child doesn't miss a single day of class. We are at the table with a fair and reasonable offer. Matter of fact, a very fair, the best in the country. And yet the union refuses to withdraw the strike notice. Mr. Speaker, we don't want to be here. Neither, no one wants to be here and have to do this. We've heard, we've heard from countless parents, Order. endless parents. Matter of fact, there's never been an issue in four and a half years that have had more emails about saying, make sure my kids stay in the class every single day. And we, we know how difficult the pandemic has been on our children. But we Response. need QP to withdraw the strike threat. And I'm not going to tolerate, Mr. Speaker, students being out of the classroom for even one day. The NDP and the Liberals either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the supplementary question, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you for the applause and thank you, Speaker. Uh, to, to the Premier, my question is for you. Jenny, a local parent, told my office, and I'm going to share her story. I am one of those parents whose child relies so absolutely on those incredible education workers. They have to be toileted. My child needs to be supervised during meals to prevent choking, to walk safely down the stairs and up the stairs. Educa medication has to be administered, and yes, the child still has to learn. Speaker, this government gave 88 per cent of their PC MPPs a $16,000, $600 raise last June. This June, Speaker, Speaker, will the Premier, my Order. question to the Premier, will this government be willing to actually give education workers a raise that they deserve and match it to inflation? And to reply, the Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear: we will always support our frontline workers, plain and simple. And I'll, I'll tell you, Mr. Sure. Speaker. The fact is, QP continues to threaten to shut down the classrooms. They refuse to back down from a strike. Our offer maintains the most generous, I'm going to repeat that, the most generous pension and benefit plan in the entire country, including 131 paid sick days, unheard of anywhere. We're seeing school boards confirm Order. what will close, the, the doors will be closed if QP goes on strike. And I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, we won't let that Order. happen. Nothing Opposition matters more order. right now than ensuring the students remain in the classroom. We're investing over $26.6 billion Spons. in public education, the single largest investment order. in Ontario history, Mr. Speaker. Education funding for this year. Thank you. Thank you. The official opposition will come to order. The next the supplementary question, member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Talking points are cheap, Premier, and when it comes to education workers, they can't eat. That's why they're at the food banks. That's why they're holding down second jobs. I'm going to share another story with you, Premier, and through the Speaker. Carrie, another teacher, tells my office, one of our ECAEs held a little girl in her lap until her grandpa had to come because she was throwing up in a garbage can. The ECE refused to leave this little girl because she was scared and nervous. Carrie then tells me, 
I watched our other ECE march down to the kinders to the library because they had to evacuate the classroom while their education assistant was controlling a friend who was having a moment or episode. All these little ones had adorable, beautiful smiles on their faces as they passed the teacher's window and gave her a wave. They didn't even know that anything was wrong in their classroom, despite the fact that there was. A caretaker take, then marched down the hallway with a bucket in hand to then clean up the mess on the floor because four students got sick that same day. All of that happened within a 24-hour period, Question. all within an hour. Speaker, will this government show the fraction of emotional intelligence that we see from education workers that they exercise every single day and return to the bargaining table and give them a fair deal? That's right. Premier. Mr. Speaker, how about the students? How about the em mental, emotional, and even physical well being of two million students and therefore the <laughs> Member for Davenport will come to order. The member for Toronto St. Paul's will come to order. The member for Ottawa Centre will come to order. The Premier has the floor. Mr. Speaker, parents and kids have had enough. We've heard it. I've never seen anything like it. There is only one party in this legislature that is standing up for the students and the parents, and that's the PC party. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the opposition can't have it both ways. Either they support shutting down schools or they stand with this government and will support keeping kids in classroom. It's either strikes or students, Response. and we're with the students. <laughs> The Leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, again to the Premier. The government's use of the notwithstanding clause to ban workers from collective bargaining is wrong. It's something the Prime Minister and I seem to agree on, and I don't agree with him on almost anything. <laughs> Here's what the Prime Minister had to say. You're a good buddy. You're a good buddy. The Order. suspension of people's rights is something you should only do in the most exceptional circumstances. And I really hope that all politicians call out the overuse of the notwithstanding clause to suspend people's rights and freedoms. The Premier Order. is fond of standing shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister. I've seen the photos. So will the Premier change tack today, join the Prime Minister, his good friend, and condemn the use of the notwithstanding clause? To reply, the Minister of Education. Let me remind the member opposite that children in this province should have rights too, and they should be in school in this province. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we have been clear. I can't hear the Minister. Minister of Education has the floor. Order. Mr. Speaker, we have been clear. We have children should be in school. They have been through two incredibly difficult years. They have been through the most difficulty in modern history. We have an obligation to ensure stability. We asked the union to bring forth a proposal that withdraws a strike on Friday. We gave them multiple opportunities to do so. And yesterday night at 10 p.m., hearing from order. the mediator and through Member the media, we're going to order. proceed with a strike that no one wants and no one should accept. Mr. Speaker, Member Mr. For Sudbury, Speaker come to order. the Premier made it clear we shouldn't be here. There's, Response. We obviously would prefer a negotiated settlement, but so long as a strike is on the table, the government will move forward with legislation that protects stability. <laughs> So, yeah, once again, um, if you repeatedly ignore the request of the Speaker to come to order, I will move to warnings. And then we know what happens after that if you ignore that. Okay. Start the clock. Supplementary. Speaker, this government is damaging the education system that our children depend on. They are bullying the educators and the workers that we depend on to educate these children. They are engaged in a flagrant attack on working people, and unions are taking notice, even the ones that have been friendly with this yeah. government. <laughs> Leuna was first out of the gate in endorsing Ford last election, but had harsh words for this government. International Vice President Joe Mancinelli, 
On behalf of Leuna, we call on, the, on Minister Lecce to revoke anti-union legislation and restore the collective bargaining rights of CUPE members and act in good faith to reach an agreement that prioritizes both keeping students in school and rights of and respect for all workers. So, to the Premier, will he listen to his friends at Leona and rip up Bill 28? Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, we want QP to respect the interests of children and parents who want to see their kids in school. They should not be out of class the on member Friday. For Davenport is the warned. union was given an opportunity to rescind this needless strike. They alone have put themselves on a footing for a strike on Sunday when they announced five-day notice to strike impacting two million children. We believe that is unacceptable and incompatible with the priorities of parents who believe stability is critical at a time of learning a disruption and the pandemic. We have an obligation to Order. ensure they stay in class. And Mr. Speaker, so long as the union regrettably proceeds with this unacceptable strike, the government will have no choice but to proceed with legislation Order. to avert a strike and keep these kids in the classroom Number where four, they belong. Toronto-St. Paul's, come to order. Final supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, when will the Premier and his ministers stop lying about the damage they're doing to the education system? Order. The member will withdraw his unparliamentary comment. I will not withdraw. I'm telling the truth. They're lying. Take his seat. The member will take his seat. Speaker. Speaker. Order. I will ask the member once again to withdraw his unparliamentary comment. My remarks were accurate and true. Premier and his ministers are lying. You will be named. Mr. Tabbins, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. Chamber for the day. Every one of you should be ashamed. Order. The member for Davenport will come to order. Member for Davenport, you will be named if you don't stop. You will persist. Ms. Stiles, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. Toronto St. Paul's will come to order. The member for Toronto St. Paul's is warned. If you continue, you will be named. Ms. Andrew, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. The next question, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Well, this 
government is actually stripping away collective bargaining rights from workers. We've been listening to education workers in my community of Niagara Falls, Fort Erie, and Niagara on the Lake. In Niagara, we spoke to Kerry, a school secretary who's been a loyal worker for nearly 20 years. She still makes under $39,000 a year as a second job just to make ends meet. She even considered getting a third job because of the increased cost of food, gas, and housing. Speaker, does this Premier think that education workers should have to work two extra jobs in order to avoid using food banks? And to reply, the Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, we have been clear. We do believe children should be in the classroom. They have to be in school every day after two years of disruption and strikes Order. that preceded it just a few years ago. Mr. Speaker, we brought forth a reasonable, fair offer to the union. 10% over four years, maintaining benefits and pensions and sick leave, which most people in this economy do not have. Mr. Speaker, even with that said, we told the union rescind this strike on Friday that impacts every Order. single student for Waterloo in the province. They, they announced this strike on Sunday, even before the government introduced the legislation on Member Monday. For Waterloo it was their is intention warned. all along, and it is regretful. We should not be here. We should have had a voluntary agreement given the fair offer we propose. But they have made clear Member they will for strike. St. Come and the government obviously has no other option but to move forward with legislation that protects Spons. the in-person learning experience our children deserve in this province. Speaker. The supplementary question. Back to the Premier, but before I ask my next question, maybe out of respect for our veterans, maybe the Minister of Education should put a poppy on it. Everybody else in the House has one on. Well, the charter rights are ignored by this government, and they hold back $2.1 billion in spending. We continue to hear from education workers that are struggling. Our office spoke this week to Jennifer, an educational assistant with over 20 years on the job. She's never seen it so bad. Schools do not have EA supply staff they need. Staff are facing rising violence in our schools. They can't hold on to staff due to low wages, serious health and safety concerns. Yep. Speaker, does the Premier think that trampling on the Charter of Rights and refusing to invest in our education system is going to fix the crisis we have in our question. school? And Premier, answer the question. To reply, the Minister of Education. Speaker, we believe kids should be in the classroom. We brought forth a reasonable proposal for children. And yet again, the members opposite have not spoken about the impacts on kids that this strike, driven by the union, announced by themselves alone on Sunday, order. will have on their for Ottawa Centre and Come the millions order. of kids in this province. Mr. Is Speaker, me. that is really sad that they have not raised any concerns about the order. impacts to children's learning. Okay. The member for Windsor West, come to order. Member for Parkdale High Park, come to order. The member for Waterloo will be named if she persists. Ms. Fife, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. The member for Niagara Falls, if you persist, you'll be, you'll be named. Mr. Gates, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. Ms. Carpoche, come to order. If you persist, you will be named. Member for Park Hill. Ms. Carpoche, you are named and you must leave the chamber for the day. The member for Windsor West is warned, and if you persist, you will be named. Ms. Gretzky, you are named, you must leave the chamber for the day. The member for Thunder Bay Superior North must come to order. The member for Ottawa Centre come to order. If you persist, you will be named. 
Mr. Hardin, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. Ms. Beaubois, you are named. You must leave the chamber for the day. The next question, the member for Stormont Dundas, South Kendall. Thank you, Speaker. The government of Ontario has a responsibility to parents and students. This is a sacred trust. That responsibility includes the guarantee of top quality education for our children and placing the most qualified teachers in front of our students. We've heard many times about the need for students to remain in class and what students will learn in these classes. However, the individuals teaching these classes matter just as much as the subject's content. From principals and vice principals to math, art, music and science teachers, and many more types of educators we have in this province, we need the most qualified individuals at the front of the classroom. Speaker, to the Minister of Education, what has our government done to ensure the right educator is in front of our children? Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member for this question and his interest as a parent and as a leader in this House, standing up for quality education in the classroom. Mr. Speaker, it was over a decade ago the former Liberal government consented in a union negotiation to a regulation, a regressive regulation called Reg 274, a regulation that permitted exclusive hiring and promotion in Ontario based on seniority. You must. Leave the chamber. Minister of Education. Minister of Education. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a regressive regulation introduced by the former Liberals that hired and promoted educators exclusively based on their union seniority. If this was you must leave the chamber. I will gladly leave, and I'm a teacher for 30 years. You are destroying public education. You're worse than Harris. Shame. Supplementary question. <clears throat> Speaker, it has been two years since the government revoked disastrous Regulation 274 that hindered young, innovative and hard-working teachers from moving up in the system. This is a positive reminder of the importance for diversity in our education system. In the last year, young educators across my riding and veteran educators have expressed their delight in this government's revoking of Regulation 274. They are grateful that our government recognized and provided a solution to the previous hiring practices that neither rewarded hard work nor gave the best chance at having a best possible Order. educator in front of our Order. children. As our province population grows, our government must focus on the future to ensure that we have enough educators in places experiencing that growth. Speaker, can the Minister of, Educa Minister of Education please explain how revoking Regulation 274 encourages teacher mobility? Minister of Education. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I want to thank the member opposite for the question. I want to just be very clear on our intent. This is essentially the anniversary of the uh, revoking this regressive regulation introduced by the former Liberals that allowed hiring based on union seniority. I believe that is inconsistent with the premise that the best educator should be in the front of a child's class. 
and the members opposite who stand up and speak about so-called the interests of kids oppose that measure. They opposed us removing that regulation. We believe new educators, young educators, and those with the qualifications should triumph in hiring, not someone who's simply been in the union the longest. This is about quality. This is about ensuring the best staff member could inspire a child. And that's why we removed this regulation, which even the former Liberal Premier agreed went too far. The Ontario Principals Council said they supported it, parents supported it, and the government will continue to do everything possible to enshrine quality in the schools of this province. Next question. The member for Toronto. Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Education. My office has been flooded with calls and emails from workers and parents alike, outraged that this government seeks to use the notwithstanding clause to violate the labour rights of education workers. I heard from Linda in Welland. She's been an administrative clerk for 10 years and in that time has seen only a $2 wage increase. When you factor in inflation over that time, she suffered a 10.7% wage cut. Linda says, quote, the minister has no concept of the work we do. Come and see what we do in our schools. Spend one day with me. Can the minister tell Linda why this government continues to forge ahead with legislation that disrespects her work, tramples on her rights, and pushes her further into poverty? Minister of Education. I, am, I want to echo the member opposite's sentiment of gratitude to the members who work in our schools. That's why, Speaker, we've hired 7,000 since we came to office. It's why, in this proposal, we're going to hire 1,800 more. We're going to increase their wages every single year, 2.5%, uh, every single year, 10 points over four years. We're going to maintain their pension and their benefits and their sick leave program of 131 days. That is a demonstration of commitment to their workers, and we believe children in this school, in this province, should be in school. That should not be be a position which we disagree with. And the Premier asked a simple question. Will you vote for a bill that ensures stability for the kids we all represent in this province? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supplementary question. Speaker, that answer is not satisfactory for the 55,000 55, education workers whose rights he is abusing. Ella Marie from Welland said to my office, the minister should come work a week in each of our positions to see if it's worth the pay we get, the abuse that EAs endure. Many of the EAs can't make meetings because they're at a second job. If you're a single person trying to find an apartment in Welland, you're looking at anywhere from $16 to $2,100 a month, plus utilities. I don't even bring in $2,400 a month. When you're a single income person, how do you expect someone to live off that? Speaker, can the minister tell Ella Marie and her colleagues, most of them women, how they are supposed to live on wages that don't cover the bills and an insulting pay increase that plunges them further into property? And why is this premier acting like a dictator and a thug? I'm going to ask the member to withdraw his unparliamentary comment. Speaker, I stand up for free collective bargaining and I won't withdraw. One more chance. Birch, you are named. You will leave the chamber for the day. Just Mr. like Kerning, the rule the member for London North Centre will come to order. Member for London North Centre is warned. People says he will be named. Mr. Carnahan, you are named. You will leave the chamber for the duration of the day. Shame on all of you. The next question, the member for Essex. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. In their final economic outlook, the previous Liberal government announced that, and I quote, Ontario would shift from goods producing to service producing sectors and shifting from goods-producing industries, in particular 
manufacturing to service sector industries. End of quote. Mr. Speaker, those are direct quotes. For families in Essex, the message from the Liberals was clear. Get out of manufacturing. Now, my constituents want to know that this government will do things differently. And so my question to the minister is this. What is this government doing to help support economic growth and tap the amazing workforce that we have in the county of Essex? Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. When we were elected, our government made a commitment to support the province's regional manufacturing economies. And in 2019, we delivered by launching a $100 million regional development program. So to date, we've attracted $716 million in investments and 1,300 jobs in southwestern, southeastern, and rural Ontario through that program. We were there with the member in Essex recently at MC3 Manufacturing and at another company, Idlecore. These two companies are investing $11 million and creating 29 well-paying manufacturing jobs with a total investment of $1 million from the province. Speaker, this is how we're supporting economic Response. growth and those skilled workers in communities like Essex, because these companies are showing the world that Ontario is open for business. Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the minister for the response. Investments like the ones made at Idlecore and MC3 Manufacturing show investors that Ontario supports businesses and supports creating jobs. That's why when he was in Germany and Austria, the minister repeatedly heard from investors that Ontario is viewed as a stable, reliable, and supportive business environment. But businesses also want to know that our government is, ex is removing excessive red tape, barriers, obstacles to success. And so my question to the minister is this. What else is this government doing in Essex County and in Ontario to ensure economic growth and opportunities question. and jobs for my constituents? Thank you. Minister of Economic Development. Speaker, businesses need a skilled workforce, investment support, and a place that's open for their business as well. And Ontario has it all. Our government continues to lower taxes, lower hydro costs, and lower the red tape burden on businesses. In fact, costs have been lowered by $7 billion every year. This is attracting record numbers of investments and entrepreneurs to southwestern Ontario. In Essex, our automotive program attracted over $500,000 in investments from industrial fasteners, B&B Tool and Mold, and Windsor Industrial Services. And with a further $631,000 invested in the Small Business Enterprise Centre there, their entrepreneurs have all the tools they need to start and grow their own businesses. And another $182,500 for their summer company. That helps students and young entrepreneurs start their businesses because, Speaker, this is how our government is driving growth in Essex. The next question, the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma question, c'est de... My question is for the Premier. Someone at, in retirement came to my office yesterday. Uh, she, uh, it, uh, she works as a, as a, in a school uh, for 60 years, and, and she's thinking to go back to work because she was not sure uh, that they were able to keep their house with the, uh, the uh, her salary of her husband, who was a, uh, worked at a school, uh, taking care of everything. Uh, she worked there for he worked there for a lot of time without uh, until he could not uh, uh, continue. Uh, they thought they could retire after 35 years of work. What does the minister think? 
that they don't not deserve a quality of life that they're respectful. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to thank the gentleman um, who served a career of service for our children. And I know that for many of these workers, they want to be with their kids. It's why I'm urging the leadership of the union to withdraw this strike that will impact that member, his, the children in his riding, and all of our ridings. Two million kids will be out of class Friday because the union has decided alone to proceed with the strike that no one wants or should accept. These kids should be in school. They have been through incredible difficulty of pandemic disruptions and strikes that preceded it. And at what point does the government say enough? These kids deserve to be in school. They have rights too, and we will stand up to ensure stability for every single child in this province. Speaker. Supplementary, the member from Ishkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here's a story of a constituent who has two young children and is a, a teacher's aide. And she has to have two works to survive. Uh, and uh, these are all the bills, $230 for their uh, uh, groceries uh, to pay the, uh, for, it has to pay for the car as well the insurance. Uh, they have $2,008 salary, but they have for a deficit of $1,000. So they cannot survive. Stephanie is uh, forced uh, to work uh, elsewhere. So my question is, uh, simple. Mr. Premier, when will you stop lying to the population? Uh, go negotiate with the union what it's supposed to do uh, with the rights of workers. Last member to withdraw on parliamentary comment. With all respect I do to you, I will not uh, withdraw my comments. All the workers in this province. I would not withdraw my comments. You must leave the chamber for the day. The member for St. Catharines is warned. If you persist, you will be named. Ms. Stevens, you are named and you must leave the chamber for the day.